President Cyril Ramaphosa has delivered his last State of the Nation address. We get comment from Neil de Beer, the president of the United Independent Movement, a party in the multi-party charter. Welcome, Neil. Very good morning, Chris. Thank you for always giving us the time just to vent our perceptions and opinions in public. Thank you. Neil, if you had to use one word to encapsulate the speech made by President Ramaphosa, what would that word be? Disaster. Absolute disaster. I um, had to sit through it because normally you do your homework, Chris, so I prepared to listen to mine. But I must tell you, three volumes, nine disciplines, and probably a little double tot of Ulf Berg needed to carry me through a state of the nation address, which I really read up and said to so many people that today this president's going to get up and call it the state of national apology because he owes this country a emphatic apology. And what we got was a total blank expression of acceptability, accountability, and the understanding that that man produced a story last night about a person called Ten Swalu. His analogy of progress. And not one of the stories that that man told was applicable to his reign as president. And I was looking at that and I was actually going, he's actually distancing himself from taking responsibility. So that was my opinion then. He really, really was living in Lala Kukule, in my opinion. Yes, the general opinion on X seemed to be that he was trying to take credit for what some of the previous presidents had achieved while avoiding accountability for what he had not achieved. Well, Chris, if you go through it and you really analyze it, he said absolutely nothing. You know, normally what you would expect from a leader, a CEO, a chairman of a company, is that when you made statements in 2020, is, is you reflect on what you said you would do last year. And when you come back to this country, you would firstly compare to your scenario of promises of last year and you would equate what did you achieve amongst those promises made last year. He totally did not refer to any matter that was done in the period of one fiscal year. And I was absolutely amazed. But this has become the algorithm this has become what we will know as Suki Cyril's trend of projects and programs and commissions and committees. And he speaks in that manner of absolutely devoid to the fact that the country has collapsed when he was vice president and now as president. And I was absolutely shocked. The way he spoke of state capture, almost as if he wasn't there. In the third person. And I, 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 I actually said, and I'm true on this, I am really true because, you know, Chris, so many times when I've been in corporate business, when I've been in uh, the matter of any organization uh, as a chairperson or as a CEO, I have always said to my people that, that tell me when there was a mistake made. Tell me if there's a problem and it's not to chastise you. It is to just understand that your IQ actually identifies this was a problem. Because if you do not say, Neil, there's a problem, Neil, we have a challenge, then I'm worried that you don't have the capability to identify problems. And when he spoke about state capture, when he was directly the second most senior citizen in this country, he actually spoke it as if it's in the third person. This is a man, Chris where we had to sit for three years, 1.3 billion rand of Zondo Commission, where he declared unilaterally on record that the ANC is accused number one. He said this. Now, if he said that the ANC in state capture was accused number one, then he was in charge as number one of accused number one. And he didn't say anything. Now, this is huge alarm bells, massive red flags. No matter your pro or con, you have to look at this very sad individual and say to myself, 
That's why you're not a good president. You're a coward. And not only are you a coward, you do not have the guts. Jy het nie die rugby balle, die tennis balle, om op te staan en te sê, we made mistakes. I was the president. I was the vice president. We take accountability. And this is how we will fix it. Never. La la la. Absolutely cuckoo. Neil, why has the president been such a disappointment to the nation? What is at the core of his, of his inability to deliver on his promises? He's a talker. He's an orator. He comes from the National uh, Mind Union workers. He was always a person that will be put in front, even from the times of Kudesa, even from the times that he was the Secretary General of the ANC, and when he went into business. The gentleman is a great man, make no mistake. Cyril Ramaphosa, as an individual, is no fool. He is an intellectual, but unfortunately, the game of politics, the actual game of being a politician, needs more than a person that wants to appease everybody, stuff committees, and walk around and not take a singular, huge decision without having to look around at other people so that he can be vindicated. I know this, I knew this, and that's why in 2017, Chris, when there was the battle between Nkosisana Tlamini Zuma, ADZ, and the CR campaign, people were absolutely flabbergasted that I said, I will stand unfortunate for Nkosisana to become president, not Cyril, because of exactly where we are today. I knew it. And that's why in 2017, at the election, when NDZ lost, and why? Because NDZ might be a woman. She might be a carrier of a surname. But I'll tell you one thing. She wouldn't have taken this nonsense from anybody. And in that fact, after that election, I actually left the ANC in 2017 because I knew what was coming. Now let's look at his previous five sonas. Can you think of any promises made during those that have been kept? Chris, it's very clear. When 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 Cyril Matawata, Ramaphosa Patatata says Suki Cyril, I, I call him Suki Cyril, but also call me a little bit. It's easy for me to insult him because I want to. Because he's insulting our IQ. He's insulting us as citizens. So when you really look at it under his vice presidency to Jacob Zuma, it is now very clear after the Zondo Commission came out that there was a massive, massive factual state capture. Chris, he was the vice president. Now, if you know how the structures work within presidencies, there is no way that that person called Cyril did not know about the Guptas, did not know about the sheikhs, did not know about state capture. There is no way that a vice president who has access to national intelligence, the South African Secret Service, and all of that, that he can stand in denial. The other problem is this continual matter of load shedding. You know what was the massive problem I've got with under with the ice cream? Was while he's standing in Cape Town City Hall telling us that he has beaten defeated and handled load shedding while we hearing this absolute utter rubbish i'm getting messages on my cell phone chris saying we just hit stage three again oh load shedding and while that's happening they put the camera on the minister of electricity i mean chris this man has one job just one job he's the minister of electricity and while this man is clapping like a little seal <laughs> because he's singing for his supper, we are getting messages that we've just gone to load three, load four. And I'm thinking to myself, Mr. President, he is the outgoing president, by the way. That is what I'm calling him. He is the outgoing president of the Republic of South Africa. This was his last sona, is that he is actually saying to us that he also stops load shedding. While when he was vice president, you will recall, this man was on the Energy Crisis Committee. And then he goes from that to saying that he has now stopped, stifled corruption. Only on those two. Corruption and low chili. Only on those two. 
He lied. It's not true. And the problem, Chris, is that the wider public, sorry, the poorest of the poor, who can't even understand what they're saying at Sona, who doesn't have the capacity to even attend Sona, is sitting today again in a shack filled with mud, sewage running past them, no jobs, no hope, and all this man can tell us is that there's a brighter future. What a lot of rubbish. But he's fond of acting surprised and shocked, as if he has not noticed the poverty or the load shedding. Is he truly that oblivious? People were commenting last night that, that he's not living, he's speaking about a country as if he doesn't actually live in it. I'll tell you how I, 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 I I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm playing the man. I, I'm not playing the man. I am playing the institution. You know, they always, when we were in state, they always said there's a difference between the president and the presidency. You know, you have to divorce the two because there will always be a presidency, but there will be change of president. Now, if you look at our root of democracy, what this man does is he's still playing the old Oros game. In other words, he's still feeding us the Oros, which, which Nelson Mandela was walking around and dishing uh, to everybody. Ah, free. Free. You will get our ah, free. So when, when, when he looks at Madiba, he, he always emotionally tries to kind of blackmail it by referring back to Mandela. He even ended last night's speech with a quote from Mandela. Now, we have moved past the Mandela era, Chris. The economy in this country is no longer the kind of Oros that we were fed in 94 of the rainbow nation, the possibility of change, the true scenario of reconciliation. What that man last night does not understand is in the past 15 years, this country has broken. This country took that rainbow ideology and turned it into black and white. And Chris, go count last night the amount of times that that president of the country mentioned the word black. Black. He mentioned it more than 16 times. Now, was he standing there as the president of the ANC or was he standing there as the president of my country. Now, I'll tell you, every time he said black economic empowerment, black farmers, black, he took us back to race. He took us back to division. Because now I'm telling you, people like me, who fought for the freedom, who took up the gun to make sure that there's one man, one vote, that there is freedom, when I looked at that discussion last night, he's the furthest divided from Nelson Mandela's vision of a united South Africa. And that hurt me. That really took me back to say to myself, this man is not at all in sync with us, Citizen X. Did it sound more like a campaign speech to you than an address to the nation? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he referred to this um, mythical uh, girl called Tinswana who was woken up in 94 and walk, he walked her through the whole process of what the ANC gave her. Medical, house, schooling, yet we're sitting at 56% youth unemployment. And you know, as he's now speaking about all of that, here comes the bombshell. Here comes a, another bomb I always leave with you. When he, when he started speaking about Corruption, Chris, which which I must tell you is one of our biggest parasites. When he started speaking about state capture, corruption, this man started using figures. That's dangerous. And he was saying that the SIU and the investigative unit started to bring back seven billion and eighty billion here and eighty billion and was recovered. And he went and he and he went on to mention billion. There's four occasions in his speech where he says 80 billion, 7 billion, etc. And I looked at this man and I went, Cyril, do you know that the total accumulative figure 
of possible state capture fraud tend to amounts to one trillion. One trillion. Not a billion. Cyril? Hey. Mere nulla. So when you tell me that you have successfully recuperated, and, and that's good, but you have successfully recuperated 80 billion rand, when the total loss through the period of state capture is approximately 1 trillion, boss, yeah. no, you're not going to do my accounts. Because no matter what you are saying and sitting and talking about a billion, you're not getting to a trillion. And you know what he says? He will not rest until every single rain has been returned. Well, Mr. President, if you just looked off your stage to the people sitting to your right, and you looked at all your people in the African National Congress, there are some of them, <clears throat> pardon me, that are sitting in front of you, whom you also need to please send the box, because they, those that really took, are sitting in front of you. And he didn't say a word. Now, uh, more and more people are remarking on how the country was better off in every respect uh, when Zuma was president, despite state capture. Well, there's a clear analogy. I mean, this is not a matter of opinion. This is not a matter of guessing. Again, this is a matter of calculating only three things. One, the total, total reverse and collapse plus of basic infrastructure. The total collapse of basic fundamental infrastructure is clear. You don't have to go and sit and just look at charts or at expenditures. Go drive for a little bit in Lady Brunt in the Free State. There's no more tar roads there. Go look at the railroad roads. There's no more rail. So when you look at the total disintegration, one, of the reverse of maintenance of infrastructure, this is a clear picture that he's lying. And possibly with his motorcade, do not drive those roads outside. Number two, this country's fiscal debt, in other words, debt to global society, will never ever be able to be paid, Chris, in your and my lifetime. We will not be able to pay that back. We are at deficit. The last time I checked, on just our current end of year budget for the country, we were short 163 billion rand. Short. And then the third most obvious statement is the pure, sure understanding that businesses are currently shutting down because they are busy withdrawing from the country. People are not focusing to the fact that we are losing huge industry because of the absolute lack of understanding from this president and his gurus that we do not and cannot afford on a fiscal position any more red tape, we need red carpet. Infrastructure, current loss of income, the rising debt, and lastly, the non-understanding of attracting investment is a killer. And I'm sorry, for a so-called man that was voted in because he's a businessman, I will tell you one thing. Cyril Ramaphosa was voted in because the world thought that this man has got a business acumen, that he has the understanding of a fiscal approach. Remember, this program is business. So you've got to focus on the fact he got given shares in every company from McDonald's to his mining entity. He got given it, Chris. He didn't run it. And when you talk to people today and they and they give you an opinion, they will all tell you the same thing. We thought he's a businessman. Yeah, he is. He got given shit. He didn't earn it. And that's my problem. There was a perception that this man could fiscally, business-wise, turn this country. Instead, that man decided to run state for his pocket instead of creating a pocket for the people. Was he an impimpi? That jury is out. 
I mean, I always say to people, there's two things in the ANC that comes out when you've got no more debate that's futuring on I2. One, you're a racist, and two, you were a spy. So the accusations will always, I mean, it's not the first time that people within the ANC, people outside the ANC, that's not with the ANC, will say, but he was actually a sellout. He was an impimpi. He was an askari. That judgment will come out. I must tell you, I've, I've heard of it, but to have tantamount proof to find the handler that handled him. I was very surprised last night to hear Terra Lokota in a television interview factually making a statement to SABC where he said that Cyril Ramaphosa, when him and Cyril were arrested, everybody went to jail except Cyril. And that was a tantamount on record accusation that that he said Cyril was an agent for him. We will not know, but one thing I do know, if he was, and you know I was, because there's, there's a huge fact about that, I wouldn't have employed him. Can you imagine Cyril being a spy and not being able to count? Well, do you think he um, settled for platitudes in that speech because he's confident that he just has to last until the election and that he will see the African National Congress into another government. You can see that man is defeated. Can you imagine having to stand in front of a nation, a country that bears so much legacy and history and at times was a global leader? Can you imagine having to go on stage at a sona? with nothing, actually with nothing. And you have to be written a speech to address, are you going to go to the ballot? Factually, you have nothing. You know, he wrote a speech once, not him, but his people. And he said, to mom, to mom you remember he was standing in parliament when we still had a parliament bill. And he, and, he, and he said to Mamina, it's a song, you must kill it. To Mamina means send me. Well, he definitely did. He to Mamina people to Esco. He to Mamina people to Portne, Strantne, Avene. He to Mamina people to Zondo. He to Mamina people to disaster. So later on, when people were saying to Mamina, sent me, I added the word P, to Mamina P, which means send me where. So that joke started to go, where people said to Mamina P, because where were we sending P? And, 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 and the problem that you've got, and I'm going to tell you three massive bombshells. Right. In Cyril's mind, he has realized that there is now something called the multi-party charter. A multi-party charter now that started with six parties and have grown to 11. A multi-party charter that last week stood up in a Joburg town hall where we couldn't fit one more single person. And where we stood up, and for the first time, Chris, I'm telling you, because I used to go to rallies of Matiba. I used to attend the rallies of every ANC leader in the democracy. And I'm telling you, there's something that's it, I, I, I don't know how to tell it. I'm a, I'm a person that loves being an orator. I can feel a room. There's either a buzz or there's nothing. Now, if you look at the buzz in Parliament last night, which was not Parliament, but down all, there was no buzz. There was not even the EFA. There was nothing. When I stood in that Joburg town hall with the leaders of the multi-party charter and I got up and we spoke and I sat down, Chris, hear me well. I'm sorry. For the first time, every party brought their own supporters and we had a multi-party charter support group sitting there. Normally, we would moor each other. Normally, we would stick each other. But for the first time, 11 parties, people sat together and got up. And I said in that speech, 
if you touch the IFP, you touch us. And I went through every party and the roof lift. Why? Not because we are great in orientation. I'll tell you why. The time has come for change. Chris, Cyril, who called us a nothing, a null on a contract, has just realized that 50 plus 1 is possible. Number 2, MK. Party MK, which is currently being led by Um Solos, Jacob Zuma, Yemi, is going to do tantamount damage to the ANC. There's no doubt, and I'm predicting this, if they go on like they're going now in KZN, in Aoteng, in Mapumalanga, clever provinces they're going for, they are going to go over 5% of the national election. I'm telling you. And thirdly, here's the last thing. They have to call this election earlier than later, Chris. In other words, they will have to call it in the latter part of, of May or in the first, second two weeks of April. They have to call it. In other words, in April, they can't wait right now to, to say, okay, 22 May or 1 June, they stuck. So he can't wait until April. He has to. I thought he would call it last night. I thought that he was going to call it last night. He has to make this election May or June, not July or August, because he cannot keep the country together, Chris. That's number three. He can't keep it together. And every day he doesn't call the date, MK is growing. Ace Magishile growing. The RET faction is coming. And I think that is where we stuck. He sat there and he doesn't know what to do. So you're saying he made that speech as he was on his way down and Zuma on the way up. I mean, can you imagine his worst nemesis is back? I mean, Zuma is absolutely, unbelievably like a recurring mole in your in your garden. Every mole comes back every day. I mean, every time you kill it, gas it, sink it, petrol it, this man's just not going over. And your problem that you've got is you can say what you want, but Jacob Zuma is relevant in this country. He's relevant. And that's why people are saying, uh, just, just an anecdote, if I may, a friend came to me and said he lost his credit card. So I said to him, you better go to the police. He said, no, no, no. He says the thief is spending less than his wife. So the problem that we've currently got is that if you thought under the Zuma era that there was state capture and the pulverizing of our accounts, I am telling you it's three times worse under Cyril. It's massive. And that's a fact. I mean, let's compare it. So your problem that you've got is Jacob Zuma is being funded by whom? Jacob Zuma has taken this country by storm. And this MK party wasn't formulated on the spur of the moment. In my opinion, it was planned for the past two three years. Thank you. That was Neil De Beer of United Independent Movement speaking to Biz News after President Soro Ramaphosa's last Sona. Thank you, Neil.